how to join Mildy as a pro. Before you can join as a pro, you need to sign up for a Bildi account. If you already have a Bildi account, go ahead and click login. There are three options to log in. First, is using your Facebook account. Second, using your Google email account. Or, third is using your email username and password. For this tutorial, I will use the third option. I will use my email username and password and click login. Once you are logged in, click, join as a pro on the upper right corner of your screen. There are two sections for you to accomplish in creating a professional account. First, your personal information. Second, is the projects section where you can upload the ongoing or recent projects that you want to showcase to the rest of the building community. Make sure to fill up all the required fields. All the information that you shared with us is safe and secure. For more info on how we handle your personal data, you may check our terms and conditions about data privacy. How to fill up personal information section. Provide your first name and last name. Gender and birthday are also required. You also need to provide your active email ID, phone number, and complete address. To make your profile stand out. Please provide a short background of your career history, accomplishments, and credentials. You may also link your existing website if available. You also need to identify your current job title. You may share an estimated job cost range to let your profile visitor aware of the working budget that you are willing to work with. And lastly, be specific on your professional services and expertise. Then, click next step. The next step is your project section. Here at Buildy, we wanted each profile to stand out. That's why adding projects is a must. To add projects to your profile, simply click Add Project. Provide a project title. Project description is optional but we encourage you to provide a short description such as the cost of the project, features, and other specifications that can be useful for your profile visitors. You may also provide the location of the project to make it easy for your profile visitors to validate your works. Set project visibility to public. Then add some good quality images of the project by dragging an image inside the box or by clicking the box to open your file manager and the location of your preferred images. After providing all the required information, click Add Project. After completing all the information on the two-section profile creation, you may now click Submit. Your profile will be reviewed and you will receive an email notification once your profile has been approved by our team. What are you waiting for? Join as pro now. How to join Bildi as a pro. Before you can join as a pro, you need to sign up for a Bildi account. If you already have a Bildi account, go ahead and click login. There are three options to log in. First, is using your Facebook account. Second, using your Google email account. Or, third is using your email username and password. For this tutorial, I will use the third option. I will use my email username and password and click login. Once you are logged in, Click, join as a pro on the upper right corner of your screen. There are two sections for you to accomplish in creating a professional account. First, your personal information. Second, is the project section where you can upload the ongoing or recent projects that you want to showcase to the rest of the building community. Make sure to fill up all the required fields. All the information that you shared with us is safe and secure. For more info on how we handle your personal data, you may check our terms and conditions about data privacy. How to fill up personal information section. Provide your first name and last name. Gender and birthday are also required. You also need to provide your active email ID, phone number, and complete address. To make your profile stand out. Please provide a short background of your career history, accomplishments, and credentials. You may also link your existing website if available. You also need to identify your current job title. You may share an estimated job cost range to let your profile visitor aware of the working budget that you are willing to work with. 
And lastly, be specific on your professional services and expertise. Then, click Next Step. The next step is your project section. Here at Buildy, we want in each profile to stand out. That's why adding projects is a must. To add projects to your profile, simply click Add Project. Provide a project title. Project description is optional but we encourage you to provide a short description such as the cost of the project, features, and other specifications that can be useful for your profile visitors. You may also provide the location of the project to make it easy for your profile visitors to validate your works. Set project visibility to public. Then add some good quality images of the project by dragging an image inside the box or by clicking the box to open your file manager and the location of your preferred images. After providing all the required information, click Add Project. After completing all the information on the two-section profile creation, you may now click Submit. Your profile will be reviewed and you will receive an email notification once your profile has been approved by our team. What are you waiting for? Join us pro now. How to join Buildy as a pro. Before you can join as a pro, you need to sign up for a Buildy account. If you already have a Buildy account, go ahead and click login. There are three options to log in. First is using your Facebook account. Second, using your Google email account. Or, third is using your email username and password. For this tutorial, I will use the third option. I will use my email username and password and click login. Once you are logged in, click join as a pro on the upper right corner of your screen. There are two sections for you to accomplish in creating a professional account. First, your personal information. Second, is the Projects section where you can upload the ongoing or recent projects that you want to showcase to the rest of the Buildy community. Make sure to fill up all the required fields. All the information that you shared with us is safe and secure. For more info on how we handle your personal data, you may check our terms and conditions about data privacy. How to fill up Personal Information section. Provide your first name and last name. Gender and birthday are also required. You also need to provide your active email ID, phone number, and complete address. To make your profile stand out, please provide a short background of your career history, accomplishments, and credentials. You may also link your existing website if available. You also need to identify your current job title. You may share an estimated job cost range to let your profile visitor aware of the working budget that you are willing to work with. And lastly, be specific on your professional services and expertise. Then, click Next Step. The next step is your project section. Here at Buildy, we wanted each profile to stand out. That's why adding projects is a must. To add projects to your profile, simply click Add Project. Provide a project title. Project description is optional but we encourage you to provide a short description such as the cost of the project, features, and other specifications that can be useful for your profile visitors. You may also provide the location of the project to make it easy for your profile visitors to validate your works. Set project visibility to public. Then add some good quality images of the project by dragging an image inside the box or by clicking the box to open your file manager and the location of your preferred images. After providing all the required information, click Add Project. After completing all the information on the two-section profile creation, you may now click Submit. Your profile will be reviewed and you will receive an email notification once your profile has been approved by our team. What are you waiting for? Join us pro now. How to join Buildy as a pro. Before you can join as a pro, you need to sign up for a Buildy account. If you already have a Buildy account, go ahead and click login. There are three options to log in. First is using your Facebook account. 
Second, using your Google email account. Or, third is using your email username and password. For this tutorial, I will use the third option. I will use my email username and password and click login. Once you are logged in, click join as a pro on the upper right corner of your screen. There are two sections for you to accomplish in creating a professional account. First, your personal information. Second, is the project section where you can upload the ongoing or recent projects that you want to showcase to the rest of the Buildy community. Make sure to fill up all the required fields. All the information that you shared with us is safe and secure. For info on how we handle your personal data, you may check our terms and conditions about data privacy. So to fill up personal information section, provide your first name and last name. Gender and birthday are also required. You also need to provide your active email ID, address, to make your profile stand out. Please provide a short background of your career history, accomplishments, and credentials. You may also link your existing website if available. You also need to identify your current job title. You may share an estimated job cost range to let your profile visitor aware of the working budget that you are willing to work with. And lastly, be specific on your professional services and expertise. Then, click next step. The next step is your project section. Here at Buildy, we wanted each profile to stand out. That's why adding projects is a must. To add projects to your profile, simply click add project. Provide a project title. Project description is optional but we encourage you to provide a short description such as the cost of the project, features, and other specifications that can be useful for your profile visitors. You may also provide the location of the project to make it easy for your profile visitors to validate your works. Set project visibility to public. Then add some good quality images of the project by dragging an image inside the box or by clicking the box to open your file manager and the location of your preferred images. After providing all the required information, click Add Project. After completing all the information on the two-section profile creation, you may now click Submit. Your profile will be reviewed and you will receive an email notification once your profile has been approved by our team. What are you waiting for? Join us pro now. Good afternoon, this is Architect Gracie Espino, the Digital Architect. I would like to welcome you all, architects, engineers, contractors, interior designers, students, and of course our dear clients for another episode of Buildy TV. So, what is Buildy? Buildy is a technology-enabled platform solution providing the best experience in connecting people with the trusted ecosystem. Just like us, architects, engineers, our clients, suppliers, contractors, so we can all merge in building. So it's a website that you can uh, we can register in, so we can have a representation of ourselves. Kung wala po tayo sa ating website yet, or you want to get more mileage being in building. So it's just an easier way for us to uh, to communicate with each other and have a, a, a system na mas madali tayo so that's really TV. And before we proceed to our episode, I would like to announce the winners for last year's, uh, last year, last week's episode. Uh, they are the ones who will get the uh, Buildy t-shirts. So first winner is Armando Sanchez. And the second winner is Freddy L. Delphi. So congratulations to our winners. And for today's episode, you can still win the t-shirts from Buildy by sharing this uh, live, by sharing this video, tag two of your friends, and uh, type in hashtags ProStock, Buildy TV, that's the with the three E's, and 
and completed his academic training in, in commercial arbitration at Philippine Dispute Resolution Center, Inc., PDRCI, in 2016, and construction arbitration at the Construction Industry Arbitration Commission, CIAC, this year, 2019. The firm, A.A. Fernandez and Partners, specializes in different modes of cooperative disputes, resolution such as construction contracts and claims management, commercial arbitration, mediation, and construction arbitration. So, yun, napakarami ng credentials si Architect Fernandez. And so, I would like to welcome you in our duty to be today, Architect Alfredo Maestro Fernandez. Um, so, can you give us a short introduction po about yourself and your company? Okay, uh, thank you very much for inviting me here no, sa PLD. No, and uh, well, it's an honor na na-invite tayo rito. And uh, as uh, for my uh, personal profile, uh, siguro nabasa na ni uh, Architect uh, JT. No, so, sa akin na lang siguro doon sa YouTube channel. Well, uh, marami akong lectures doon. Uh, pwede nga, sundan niyo ako. And uh, magandang hapon sa lahat. And thank you for joining us, Architect Fernandez. Um, so, siguro, I'll call you maestro na lang para uh, swak na swak sa branding. Is that okay? At least uh, short yun. No? Pagka sinabi mo maestro, lagi sa doon sa doon. So, masyadong mahapa. Yeah, ako sa doon ka na kilala eh. Doon ka na kilala oh. sa mga followers mo, sa mga uh, those who are watching your YouTube channel and your mga live and all. So, yeah, and yeah. dahil Sabihago mo na akong tawag itong maestro. Um, our topic for today is RA9266 Architecture Act of 2004. So, um, the way I will go through sa ating usapan, sir, is as if wala akong kaalang-alang. Para sobrang, ako baga, um, all those who are listening or watching our FB live, architecto man or lawyer man or hindi, mas importante yung hindi wala talagang alam, mas maintain na nila, di ba? So, um, for those who will comment later your questions or kung meron po kayong mga reaction, please do comment in this uh, Facebook Live. I can read your comments. So, babasahin natin yun and then hopefully you will be able to answer your comments. So, first, architect, um, RA9266, can you give us a brief uh, kung ano lang yung gist nitong batas na to. Of course, mahaba yan. Maraming, maraming laman yan. Pero yung layman's term, ano po ba yung RA-9266? Okay, so when we talk about RA-9266, uh, actually this is already an amendment to the old architecture law. No? So the uh, uh, new law, which is uh, Republic Act 9266 or the Architecture Act of 2004, is an amendment of Republic Act 545. So our uh, architecture law, old architecture law in 1950, is uh, Republic Act 545. So in uh, 2004, nagkaroon ng uh, amendment and uh, ito na yung lumabas yung RA 9266. So ang question ngayon is, uh, bakit nga ba nagkaroon ng RA 9266? Hindi pa ba yung uh, ating uh, RE uh, 545 no kung bakit uh, nag-amend pa tayo no so pag tinitingnan natin there are some uh, other scope ng uh, ng mga architects na nawala pagdating dito sa Republic Act 9266 uh, so parang yung yung old architecture law uh, Republic Act 545 is uh, already inconsistent to the uh, present uh, situation no dahil uh, doon sa RE 545 di ba uh, we are on the allied uh, services. No? Uh, yung portion doon, no, nagkaroon na ng mga specialty board sa uh, environmental planning, nagkaroon ng specialty board sa interior design, no, and yung natira sa atin sa architect architectural interiors, no, and in fact, uh, physical planning and pl landscape architecture, nagkaroon na ng mga specialty board. So, it uh, goes to be in inconsistent sa kaliman sa present practice. And uh, yung isang uh, nangyari pa doon is uh, on RA545 kasi, architects are allowed to uh, pre 
experts, financial uh, architectural, and at the same time, uh, structural uh, documents. No? While in uh, Republic Act 9266, hindi na natin makikita yung uh, preparation ng uh, structural documents. No? Uh, agad na ay ang, ang point natin doon is that uh, we will delineate the function between architects and the uh, civil engineers. So, na, uh, at the end, nagkaroon ng uh, disputes na hanggang ngayon is nakapending doon sa, sa Supreme Court. So, may mga pagbabago na ginawa doon sa old architecture law kung bakit ay nagkaroon ngayon ng uh, bagong uh, pata RA 9262 no? para mag-align uh, sana doon sa uh, present uh, situation. So basically, sir, um, the RA 9266 is based on the previous RA 945, uh, 945 but changed, amended to uh, uh, amended para maka-adjust sa tamang panahon. Yes. There's a lot of changes now, di ba, sir? Yeah. So, um, ang pagkakaintindi ko kasi, as an architect, the RA 9266, ang pagkakaalam natin mga architect mo, is this is a law that specifically says that arkitekto lang ang pwede gumawa ng architectural plan. So, kaya-gaya po na napanggit na kanina, dahil tinanggal, this law also takes away our uh, our legal right to sign the other allied services like structural and all that. So, nililinaw din ito kung ano yung scope ng arkitekto. Tama po ba? Yes, so, kasi pag tinignan natin ngayon yung ating RA 9266, nakalimit na lang tayo doon sa structural conceptualization. No? While on RA 545, malinaw na nakalagay doon that yung uh, isang scope of practice ng architect is architectural and structural designing. So pag uh, tinignan natin yung mga architects before RA 9266, diba, yung sinasabi natin na uh, nagpa-practice pa tayo ng daet, no? detailed architectural and uh, engineering uh, design services. Because on RA 545, uh, we are allowed to prepare architectural and uh, structural design. But uh, for the other allied professionals like uh, plumbing and sanitary, electrical, there is no basis in law actually na we are allowed to do the design of uh, plumbing and sanitary and uh, electrical. What the law says, even on RA 545 and now at the present uh, RA 9266, Ang sinasabi doon is uh, sa allied professional, architectural layouting of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and sanitary, uh, electronics communication. So malinaw yon na nakalagay doon eh, uh, architectural layouting that is not considered as uh, engineering per se. Now we are allowed to do the mga electrical uh, circuits, no? the stations of loads, that is purely the uh, responsibility of the uh, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and uh, yung mga ibang allied professionals. But on RA545 kasi malinaw talaga doon na mayroon tayong uh, architectural and structural uh, documents. Kaya nga, uh, nag-i-structural design talaga tayo ng RA545 pa. No? In fact, we are still uh, working for uh, this uh, structural design analysis allowed yung uh, architect doon sa RA545. While in RA9266, tinanggal yun, no and uh, ang uh, na iwan sa atin yun is the uh, structural conceptualization. So, no, wala sa atin yun. But, uh, you know, uh, kung, kung uh, mapapansin ninyo yung may uh, Facebook account doon na karaan, I, I even posted kung uh, allowed pa ba tayo doon sa dahil. No? Kasi, nagdahil sa yung RA545 because malinaw that there is a basis in law that we are allowed to design structural uh, drawing. But in RA966, we are now limited on uh, structural uh, conceptualization. No? Although we are uh, uh, taught in school na to prepare uh, the whole uh, complete uh, working drawings from architectural, structural, planning, planning and electrical because we are the prime professional. No? Sa atin kasi yung balik yes, yes. Uh, prime professionals, yes. tayo ngayon ay kukonsult ng mga allied uh, professions pagka may mga changes or may mga recommendations sila na dapat uh, kailangan lakihan natin yung uh, shop na to dahil hindi magkasa yung mga tubo. That's, that's the main reason actually. So, yun ang sinasabi natin, okay. we are being a prime professional in the uh, construction industry. Okay. So, Linawin ko lang ulit, sir. Ha? So, um, 
doon sa iyong explanation, ay alala ko kasi when I was a student, ang um, sinasabi ng professors ko at that time, pwede pa, pwede pa tayo mag-design ng structural, yeah. ng whatever, ng, on a certain number of levels. Kung hanggang silang palapag lang, di ba? So, the, NAR, uh, the RA-9266 ngayon, hinilinaw nun na hindi na pwede. Yes, so, we are so, only doing it now structural conceptualization. So, all we can do as an architect is, um, gagawa tayo ng plano, ilalagay natin yung, um, we, we can add grids na, di ba? Para at least the, the engineers will be able to use that as a reference na, um, ito yung gusto ko sanang paglagyan mo ng columns, di ba? But, the design per se, kung gaano kalayo, gaano kalaki, gaano kataba ng mga bakal na gagamitin, should be designed by the structural or civil engineer. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. When it comes to electrical and sanitary naman and other um, other allied services like heat, um, electronic, pati na rin ang mechanical, what we can do as an architect is, again, i-lay out lang. Dito sa room na to, gusto ko dito tong ilaw na to. Yes. Gusto ko pin light to, gusto ko down light to, gusto ko merong cove light dito. Uh, when it comes to electrical, um, saksakan ko, gusto ko dito, kasi alam ko dito ko nilagay yung washing machine, or dito ko nilagay yung ref, di ba? So, yes, hanggang right. doon sa, so, for us, ang role natin is, pagbibigay pa rin tayo ng locations, lahat ng locations na to, as per our architectural layout, as per our suggestion, and then, the allied engineers will be the one to design it. Sila yes. na magkakomplete ng loads, sila na yung gagawa ng schedule, sila na yung gagawa ng details. Yes, that's correct. Eventually. Right. No. Uh, kung uh, mag-da-edge yung isang architect, uh, mm-hmm. yung kung yan ay uh, ang isang architect, for example, meron talaga siya malaking architectural firm, and uh, he engaged to employ the uh, structural engineers and other allied professionals, then pwede siya mag-da-edge. No? But for those uh, uh, private uh, practicing or sole practice architects, so what you can do is that you prepare the architectural documents and then tie up with the uh, other disciplines. So, no? pag makita natin uh, after the uh, the amendment of R five four five and nagkaroon na tayo ng RA ninety two sixty six, nagkaroon ng initiative yung uh, Secretary of Public Works and Highways no? to revise also. So, yung uh, implementing rules and regulations of uh, PDT 96. No? And pag nakita ninyo yung uh, revised uh, implementing rules and regulations of PDT 96 na yun, wala tayong uh, structural detailing dyan no? sa requirement na no? pagkita mm-hmm. na natin yung uh, IRR ng PDT 96. Wala na tayo dyan na uh, structural detailing. It's because it's uh, now the responsibility of the uh, allied professionals that should be our partner. No? Diba? So, that's uh, really the, the correct uh, idea on that uh, amendment uh, uh, or so, so, I mean. so, mm-hmm. so, the right process is um, design nating architectures, gagawin natin yung mga reflective ceiling plan, gagawa tayo ng layout ng mga saksakan, layout ng banyo, whatever yung papas after note, isisend natin sila, ipapasa natin sila sa ating engineer consultant, let them do the design, get it back to us, and then we review it if it's still the same as our design. Correct? Yes. Yes. Yun Correct. yung tamang proseso. No, sir. So, oh. ibig sabihin, sa bawat plan, no, sa bawat blueprint, hindi pwedeng arkitekto lang gumawa. Dapat yes. lahat ito ay nagraging teamwork na kasama ang allied uh, services, allied engineers, di ba? Yes. Correct. Uh, okay. Kaya mo so, yung, in, uh, magkita mo yung revised IRR natin, di ba? Uh, yung structure niya is napakaganda eh. So, kasi pinuhay niya doon yung lahat ng uh, professionals involved in the construction industry. So, ang ganda ng distribution, it will have it lang na uh, some other partners uh, petition. So, uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, super loving na sinasabi. Diba? But uh, pag tinitinan natin is uh, maganda na sana yung distribution ng uh, work yes. of the construction industry partners. Okay, sir. So, in that sense, babalik ako sa sinabi mo. The architect is the prime professional. Um, although mahabang usapin na to, dadaanan ko lang. Um, the architect should be the prime professional dahil sa atin nagsimula yung plano, yes. sila ay magbabase lang sa plano natin at tayo rin yung may last say. 
kung yeah. ano yung mangyayari doon sa ginawa ni ng design na. Because again, he referred it from the original plan ng architect na natin. That's why the architect is the prime professional. Yes, okay, correct. sir. Dahil nabanggit mo na kanina na nilino yan kung ano ang role ni architect, ano role ni engineer, at architects lang ang magtaking um, right to create, to draw, to to design architectural plans. Yes, sir. Paano naman kung merong mga lumagpa sa limitations na yun? Paano kung si civil engineer or si contractor ang ginagawa ay magpapadrawing lang sa craftsman and then sila na yung sila na yung magpa-process and all. Anong pwede natin gawin doon? Tama ba yun in the first place? Okay. Y- yun, yun, ang, uh, yun ang dilemma natin ngayon. Ano? Because uh, we don't have uh, control with uh, those illegal practitioners. No? Especially uh, those graduate of uh, architecture. So ang nakikita ko kasi dito sa portion na to is that uh, nawala doon sa dating resolution. Kasi nung RA545 pa, I think that was 19... Uh, 89, no? Kung di ako magkamali. Or, uh, 1984. There is a board resolution noong uh, 1984 that was signed by uh, the chairman of the uh, Professional uh, Regulatory Board of Architects, si, uh, ano pa, si uh, architect, uh, Cesar Cancela, no? Nung nasa RA545 pa tayo. Nakalagay doon sa logbook of the diversified experience that uh, all architects must render a mentorship to all the aspirants for a map for a minimum of four or uh, months and uh, that uh, mentorship ng isang architect is that uh, hindi ka pwedeng mag uh, renew ng iyong uh, PRCID on that time pagka ikaw ay walang mentorship sa isang uh, aspirant for a minimum of four months so in that aspect uh, hindi lang yung uh, aspirants ang naghahanap ng trabaho so, hindi lang yung aspirants ang nagsasabi na ang kaya ko papasok but uh, even the architects, nagsasabi na, oh, mag-apprentice ka naman sa akin uh, because uh, the architect uh, needs that aspirant no, na ba mentor dahil requirements din yung sa renewal na professional life or professional uh, identification. Ba? But on uh, RA-9266 na, and dahil naglabas ng panibagong resolution, uh, board resolution number 4, series of 2005, nawala yung uh, context na yun. No? So what happens right now is that uh, graduate of architecture Ang, uh, ang uh, hinahanap nila ngayon is employment rather than uh, apprenticeship. No? So dapat mabago yung konsepto na yun. Even in the academy, dapat uh, minumold talaga yung uh, mind ng ating mga aspirants na after graduation, you are not really allowed to to uh, design uh, any architectural uh, document na parang talagang arkitekto ka. No? or you are offering services to yeah. others. Kasi ang uh, role mo mm-hmm. after graduation sa College of Architecture is diversified training, wala nang iba pa. No? Kung uh, hindi ka magpuposit for the uh, board uh, licensure examination for uh, example, then you continue with your diversified training kasi pwede naman mag-compensate sa'yo yung mentor. But offering it to other uh, professionals, like for example, uh, engineering, no? pag-apply ka doon, you are to be graduate of uh, architecture. So, di ba, parang mayroong uh, uh, parang na, na, ano ka, na disalign ka, no, na dapat uh, you are serving architects rather than other professionals. Mm-hmm. Kasi, uh, ang training mo is more on architectural, dapat sa architecture, yeah. kasi gaya nga yung sinabi ko, uh, their role dapat is uh, more on structural designing. So, dapat wala ka ron. So, so, dapat nandito ka lang sa side ng, uh, ng mga architects no, for, for that employment. So, Kasi yan sa dilemma natin na, na kailangan tingnan. So, kasi ngayon, pang, yung mentorship na mandatory sa mga architects, wala na para siya mismo pag-graduate ng studyante. So, sabihin niya, o sa firm ka, sa, sa akin ka muna, no, for, for minimum of four months, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, with that kasi may control dapat yung mga architects mentor, eh, na naiipon yung mga students sa mga architectural firm because that is mandatory. Ngayon na wala yun, o hinahayaan natin yung mga students graduate na maghanap ng sariling employment and majority po mapapasok na sa mga construction firm no? na hindi talaga diversified training yung uh, practice. And uh, in fact, yung mga trabaho nila sa mga ganyan na hindi diversified training, napipermahan din ng mga architects na nag... Uh, pinapa... ano nila? Pinapalabas no? that they are mentors. No? 
kung sa totoo lang, uh, the uh, six phases cycle of uh, diversified training is hindi talaga nag-apply. So, yun yung naging problema yeah. na siya. So, yun, those, uh, those who are students pa ng architecture ngayon, so, uh, let's take the advice of maestro, no? It's always better. In fact, yun talaga yung design sa inyo, sa atin, na magiging arkitekto, na nag-pursue ng field na to, is for you to be mentored by an architect as well. Kasi, um, yun yung ano eh, yun yung kailangan nyo rin to, to prepare for your career and to prepare for the board exam. Although, of course, dahil na rin sa, sa realidad ng buhay, baka mapunta kayo sa ibang mga scope, like mapunta kayo sa engineering field na, or mapunta kayo sa construction agad, um, of course, it's still your choice. Pero for us, being uh, somehow matagal-tagal na rin sa industriya, um, for us, we need, it is better talaga if you uh, get mentored under a licensed architect. In fact, yun ang isa sa tingin kong maling na ginawa ko eh, as an architect. Hindi ako naging hindi ako as in nagpaka-draftsman ng matagal. Because um, na, na, nasabak agad ako sa uh, constructor. And um, I believe it's, it's a really good uh, training for me. If talagang nagtagal ako as a draftsman, nagtagal ako kakagawa nito mga detalye na to. And um, learn from uh, very good architects at uh, senior to me at that time. So, sir, thank you for that advice. No? Sana mapulutan ng aral ng mga
uh, employed with uh, the other uh, construction firm. Kung uh, hindi man uh, ipinagbabawal, for example, because uh, that is one of the means for him or her to uh, uh, get uh, compensation, that should not be credited as an uh, apprenticeship uh, program. No, para magpipilitan dapat siyang mag-apprenticeship for another, another two years. No? Because that, uh, that uh, employment na hindi, uh, in, hindi siya apprenticeship uh, mentor agreement ang uh, pinirmahan mo sa isang kumpanya, that should not be credited. No? That should not be allowed uh, to be accepted as diversified training. Kasi iba yung regular employment natin. No? sa diversified uh, training program. In fact, ang aking uh, labor code na siya sabi niya na pagka ikaw ay uh, nasa on-the-job training or apprenticeship uh, training, dapat ang uh, kontrata na pinipirmahan mo sa iyong employer is apprenticeship agreement and not uh, irregular employment agreement. So what happens today, karamihan ng uh, pasok sa uh, regular employment. So pag regular employment ka, nag-credited as an apprenticeship. Kasi hindi naman talaga yan na specified training. No? Kasi iba yung, ano, eh, iba yung duties ng uh, mentor. Eh, so what if pinasok yung sweldo niya as an allowance lang para mapalabas na his apprentice? Well, hindi nila pwedeng Pwede gawin yun. Kasi under the labor code kasi magpapenalize ang kumpanya no? pag uh, nalaman ng uh, Department of Labor uh, 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 employment kasi naka-safety. No? And of course, uh, account uh, records hindi rin pwedeng uh, dayain yun. Otherwise, uh, ma-tax evasion sila sa Bureau of Internal uh, Revenue. Uh, uh, okay. So, yun yung magiging senaryo dyan. Ayun. So, ayun, marami tayong nalinayawan doon. No? First, if you are working in a contractor pala, yung, hindi pwedeng sabihin ng, ng, yung nagpo-post na contractor na, po-post na kasi, design and build, um, hire us, whatever, ganyan, nagpo-promote ka. Tapos kapag binanggit natin, na tinanong natin kung wari, um, architect po ba kayo? Why are you offering architectural services? And if the, uh, the contractor says, meron kami ng architect, nag-employ ako ng architect, mali pala yun. Kasi whoever is employed under the construction company cannot do the design. Tama ba, sir? So dapat, yung, yung nag-design para sa construction company is still under a consultant, which is a separate architect. Yes, diba? so, kasi so, ang uh, contractor as uh, incorporation, no? una-una, when you register as a construction firm or as a contractor per se, no? uh, incorporation cannot uh, practice architecture. That is the general rule. No? Kasi ang practice of architecture is only limited to the persons with uh, academic qualifications. No? And uh, yun lang yung pinigyan ng PRC, na Certificate of Registration or Authority to practice the profession. Take note, ang isang corporation and ang isang architect, mayroong uh, separate and distinct personality. Uh, a corporation is a juridical mm, person, yes. while an architect is a natural person, which is only the natural person were vested an authority by the PRC to practice a profession. So, kaya kapag kininan mo, you are not allowed to uh, register with the Securities and Exchange Commission as a corporation because corporation is separate and distinct personality with those of its uh, stockholders. So, so yung stockholders lang allowed to practice, the corporation itself as a juridical person, is not really allowed to practice architecture dahil wala silang authority from the PRC. No? At hindi nila pwede sabihin na may mga architects mm-hmm. naman kami. Yes, may mga architects kayo, but the one who practice is exactly. the corporation, not <laughs> architects per se. So that, that's the, ano, that's the uh, creation mm-hmm. of uh, the boundary between uh, uh, an architect as the uh, stakeholder and the corporation mm-hmm. as the juridical person. Ayun, so malinawan pa tayo ha, ah, kasi mara- ang isa sa nagiging problema ng mga arkitekto is hindi na sila makakuha ng project dahil ang mga contractors na ba-offer ng design and build, saying meron naman silang arkitekto. So, mali yun. Mali pala na meron na, dahil nag-hire sila ng arkitekto, pwede na sila mag-design and build. Hindi pa rin, yes, you may hire an architect to do your soft drawings, probably to to supervise the construction or or or, or uh, coordinate with the contractor or uh, subcontractor suppliers and everything but they cannot function as a design architect so therefore for every contractor for every project ni contractor dapat meron siyang hinahire na design consultant so dapat hindi nawawala ng trabaho ang arkitekto hindi nawawala ng, ng trabaho si design consultant kasi bawat project niya dapat taga-hire pa rin siya ng architect. Diba? So, yes, yes. It, so that, it should 
empleyado ka, arkitekto ka, empleyado ka ng isang corporasyon. Guruhin mong uh, nagsasahod ka ng monthly, but you sign and seal the uh, architectural drawings and you take liability on that for two years. Diba? Oh, diba? Kaya mag you take that liability, may right back, hindi pa nga pwede. No? Kung mahigpit ka lang yung ating uh, Proportional Degradation Commission or yung ating uh, uh, Board of Architecture, baka nga ma- may ethics sa uh, complaint ka pa. No? Uh, hindi uh-huh, lang uh-huh. Ito, ito, uso yung pag-file ng complaint sa mga malpractices. Ano? Bito, wala akong masyadong uh, narinig. No? Pero pag kaya ay ginawa, ito na pa namin ang check kung ma-revoke ma- exactly. yung license. Exactly. Diba? Diba? So, siguro yun po ang kailangan natin, no? yung higpitan and really go after this who, who yung lupagpas sa limitations And of course, those who, yung mga nagmamalpractice din. Okay, sir. Um, siguro, let's get some questions from our, for those who are watching, no? Meron ditong comment si, okay, si UAP Bagong Bayan. At, uh, so, original architects, the question is, the global pandemic of COVID-19 stopped literally everything, including businesses and events. What are the effects of those who passed the licensure exam for the architects the postponement of their oath taking ceremony because of the IHES guidelines or no mass gathering? Are they allowed to be inducted by the UAP chapters of their new members if they were not passed yet with their oath taking? Okay, legally speaking, the answer is no. So, no, no, hindi ka architect, no? Huh? Uh, you will only become the full pledge architect when you take an oath. Okay, passing the licensure examination will not make you an architect legally. There is a requirement, the uh, issuance of the certificate of registration and the uh, undertaking of an off of professional. So, pagka ikaw ay uh, sa court exam and uh, hindi ka pa nakapag-take ng oath, you are not yet a full-fledged architect. And take note, uh, membership in the organization should only be limited to registered and licensed architect. So, premature yan. So, kung ako ang titingin legally, uh, premature yan that uh, you will induct them as uh, their members. So, sabi niyo, sunod na lang. No? But, uh, although, by principle, uh, they, uh, they are already architects. But, legally speaking, they are not yet architects when they were not able to take an oath. No? Uh, nagtataka nga ako kasi medyo parang matagal yung action ng uh, PRC dito sa mga pukasan ng 2019 na hindi nakapag-take ng uh, oath ngayon na pwede naman kasing uh, mag-take ng oath uh, dito sa, ano, eh, sa mga online, di ba? May mga online na uh, oath-taking ceremony. Yeah. In fact, uh-huh. yung sakot uh-huh. report niya nung uh, last uh, two weeks, I think, no? naglabas sila ng uh, kanilang uh, uh, resolution na yung mga pumasa sa bar exam will be scheduled for an uh, online oath-taking. Online? Uh, so, yung, yeah. natin, uh, so, oh, online. Hindi pala online. Hindi natin kailangan. Hindi nga lang pala. Yes, actually, uh, hindi naman na uh, nakalagay sa batas that you will be uh, in the mass of taking ceremony. So, kasi pag, pag binasa natin yung RA 8981, so, you can uh, take an oath to any uh, members of the board or any uh, members of the commission uh, to be designated ng, uh, ng uh, commission. So, in fact, uh, kung mag-designate yung commission, halimbawa sasabihin ng uh, PRC later on na uh, we will... Uh, we will appoint or we will designate the judges of the courts to administer an oath to professionals in every cities and municipalities. Pwede nilang gawin yun kasi sinasabi ng batas, the, the commission can, uh, can uh, delegate. No? Or in the regional offices of the PRC, no? the commission may designate, designate the uh, regional uh, directors, the PRC regional directors to administer an oath taking. Pwede, pwede. No, kaya nga sabi ko, bakit ang tagal? So, kailangan lang natin silang mag, ano, magsimula na mag-organize. No? Yeah, or, or, in fact, pwede, siguro, pwede, pwede naman eh. No? Kasi yung ipot natin, mm-hmm. we appear with the board. No? So, we appear with the board and the commission, may, may uh, webinar niya tayo, no? nagkikitaan tayo. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, so, naman siguro nakalagay doon that you personally appear. No? So, baka pwede uh-huh, naman. Uh-huh. Baka pwede naman. Ayun. So, siguro yun ang kailangan gawin ng mga pumasa na po ng board exam. Nainit na init ng ma- ma- malagyan ng pangalang architect, ibunahan ng inyong mga pangalan. So, pwede naman pala. Um, you just have to ask the right, uh, the right organization. Kung meron na ng OTT exam online. So, we have another question. Uh, kanina pinag-uusapan natin. Sabi ko sa 
pwede sila mag-file ng petition. Baka pwede sila mag-file ng petition, no? Sa PRC, personally, pwede kang sumulat na ako, pwede kang mag-take ng auto. Sa PRC? Pwede naman sila. So, yun. Uh, siguro, write a letter of petition, padanag nyo sa PRC para mag-schedule na sila ng inyong OTT kahit online. So, so eto. We have another question from um, Ian Mendoza. Kanina pinag-uusapan natin, with your rugged of architecture, pero hindi ka naman lisensyado, you are still not allowed to do any design or offer architectural services. Kasi wala ka mga lisensya. Kasi paano kung mas grabe pa? Yung nag-aral lang ng autopad. Hindi naman talaga siya nag-aral ng, ng architecture. Wala siya sa kahit na anong field ng RT. It's just so happy na nanonood siya ng YouTube na pag-aralan niya kung paano mag-draw grid sa autopad. Tapos, sila na yung nagmamagaling na nag-offer ng architectural services. Pwede ba yun? Okay. So, Ang tanga ng tanong, no, sir, pero nakisagot. Yun yung magandang iposas. No? Yun yung mga magagandang iposas. <laughs> eh, you know, meron akong isang uh, staff before nung nasa isang company ako na yung uh, husband niya is, uh, is graduate of uh, commerce. No? Hindi nag-training lang ng uh, tat sa may kipat. Ang nagiging problema natin, we were not able to regulate those uh, nag-o-offer ng mga uh, tutorial. No? Kasi kung yung software na yan, for example, is intended for uh, engineering and architecture, for example, di ba? Dapat hindi sila tumatanggap ng, uh, ng mga ibang uh, courses to be trained. No? Ang problema natin, wala tayong regulation regarding dyan. Pag, uh, pero pag tinindan natin yung ating RA 9266, pero dyan nakalagay na teaching of uh, AutoCAD subjects is one of the scope of practice of uh, architecture. No? So, siguro kailangan ng regulation regarding that. Ngayon, dito naman sa hindi naman nag-aral no, ng uh, architecture no? and nag, uh, nag-training lang siya ng uh, TAD. Okay? Kung siya ay nag-employed as CAD operator with an architect, so supervised ng architect, so wala tayong issue doon. Uh, kasi employed naman siya sa isang architectural firm and that is under with the uh, supervision of an architect. Pero kung siya ay uh, nag-practice personally, no, na parang uh, architect na rin siya, nangontrata na siya ng design, no? mm-hmm. then that's the time na uh, he is engaged in the illegal practice of architecture and uh, pwede siyang uh, makomplain sa PR BOA and uh, the PRC. So, sir, malinaw na malinaw yun. Kapag ka... Uh, merong draftsman, nag-post siya ng mga working drawings, tapos nakalagay pa siya sa title block ng buong pangalan niya, nakalagay pa design file. Hmm. It's, a, uh, it's a clear uh, proof that it is already a violation. Yes, of course. Because uh, under section 34 ng ating RA 9266, diba bali na doon, non-registered person cannot claim equivalent service. So kung hindi ka registrado architect, to graduate ka man, uh, nag-training ka lang, no? as long that you perform uh, those services equivalent to the works of an architect enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3 and 4 of our NA 266, then that is tantamount of practice of architecture. And that is prohibited under Section 25 ng ating batas. Diba? Sinasabi ng Section 25 natin, uh, and any other title, sign, advertisement that indicates that such person is practicing uh, architectural profession. Well, hindi necessary na uh, hindi ka gumamit ng, uh, ng uh, word na architect is hindi ka nag-illegal practice. Okay? So, kahit, uh, walang, uh, kahit hindi ka naglagay ng title sa pangalan mo na architect ka, as long that... Uh, walang term na architect. Yes, job to title. For example, architectural designer. No? Mm-hmm. Designer. And uh, you perform the services in the in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4. That is tantamount to the... Uh, works equivalent to the practice of architecture that is prohibited under our law. Okay, sir. So that's enough proof, clearly. Marami na po tayong screenshot. Marami na po, ba't po tayong nahuhuli? Iba't iba. Merong hmm. draftsman, merong contractor, merong nag-auto, natutulang mag-auto ka, natutulang mag-sketch up, natutulang hmm. mag-union, merong engineers um, who are doing all this malpractice na nakikita natin na 
natin mali. Tapos pag may magko-comment tayo, mali yan. Yung mali yung ginagawa mo, it's a virus, ang tukang ito. Pero, it doesn't stop here eh. What, in a way, para lang tayong umangangaw nang wala namang nangyayari. So, what should be our next step? Okay. Ibabalik ko lang yung tanong. Okay? Ano ang ginagawa ng mga UAP chapters natin? Kasi, di ba, uh, una, kung uh, aasahan mo yung uh, PR BOA, hindi nila yan kakayanin, tatlo lang sila. No? Hindi nila yan maigot mm-hmm. ang Pilipinas para hanapin yung mga nag-iigod sila. Yeah, true. Kung alawa, uh, kaya nga tayo may, mayroong mga chapters no? sa iba't ibang lugar to represent the national level. So, ang palagi ko nga tinatanong sa mga talks ko pagka ako yung na-invite sa mga lugar kung saan man ng uh, mga invitation ko rin kung saan yung nakaanay. No? Ang palagi kong tanong doon is that uh, kung may meto yung mga UAP chapters is that may programa ba ang ating Committee on Ethics? May, kasama, may, may programa ba yung ating uh, Committee on Illegal Practice? No? Kasi kung uh, may programa kayo sa inyong lugar, kayo mismo ang nakakakita ng mga nagbabiolation sa uh, areas of jurisdiction. Maliban na lang kung yung members nyo rin ang nagsasign and seal ng mga trabaho ng mga illegal uh-huh. practice. O na uh, hindi natin na uh, hindi natin napapansin. So, kasi sa illegal sealing of the horse of that, illegal, of that uh, graduate of architecture, draftsman, no? we are not allowed to sign and seal. Pag tinignan natin under our law, wala tayong scope of practice yeah. sa signing and sealing under uh, scope of practice sa architecture okay. sa Bill 1, Section 3 and uh, okay. 4. Ang signing and sealing mm-hmm. natin sa uh, later part of uh, the law is signing and sealing ng ating works no or under with our supervision. Pag sinabing under, under with our church supervision, ibig sabihin, empleyado natin, kinapagawa natin, hindi siya sign and seal natin. So walang scope of practice na pupunta sa'yo yung draftman, sabihin niya, hindi naman ako nagsipagong okay, architect ako, nag-prepare lang ako, ikaw, ikaw naman na mag-sign, valid yon That is not correct. No? Kaya nga sinasabi ko, dapat nga, okay, oh, so do the business, you should not accept uh, plans and civil mm-hmm. plan ko yung first block ng Titan block na hindi nakarespect na talagang professional yung uh, gumawa. Okay. No? Yes. And uh, yung mga architects naman na nagsasign and seal, no? that is ibang practice of uh, profession because that is considered as aiding or abetting that non-registered persons in the uh, illegal practice of uh, architect. In fact, that is the ground for the revocation and uh, suspension of our professional license under Section 23 of uh, our law. No? So, ang, ang tanong ko si Jan is, nasaan ba yung uh, Committee on Illegal Practice natin sa mga chapters? No? Kasi sila lang ang uh, pwedeng magpuna ng mga, mga ganyang uh, senaryo in their areas of jurisdiction, di ba? So, sino pa bang magkukol ng attention yan? No? So, huwag nating iasa na kung, kung sino ang mag-file. O huwag nating iasa na mayroong taong mamuno lang at tayo ay uh, sasakay na lang pagka uh, nag, uh, nag-success yung uh, pag-file niya ng complaint. No? In fact, pag tininan mo yung uh, Section 41, ng, uh, uh, Section 42 ng ating uh, RA 9266, ang nakalagay doon, any person can file a complaint. So, ang sinasabi ni person dyan, whether a natural person or a, or a juridical person. So, UAP chapters is a juridical person. As an arm of the UAP national as a juridical person. So, kung UAP mag-file as a juridical person, then that is fine. If uh, sa tingin mo mayroon kang uh, pera to file a case personally with, with that uh, person, illegally practicing architecture, then that is fine. No? So, either of the two, the organization or uh, each of the member, can file a case no, sa mga nag-illegal practice. Okay. So, sir, yung, kung mare, ako taga Sampalo, pero yung nakita kong illegal practice taga Bulacan, kung mare lang, pwede ba ako mag-file ng complaint nyo kayo na taga Sampalo ako? O dapat dun ako sa UAP chapter Bulacan magsabi na, hey, nakita ko to, uh, siguro dapat atunan nyo, baka pwede nyo gawa ng ano, ng complaint. Paano po ba tamang proseso? Well, actually, kahit saan ka ang chapter pupunta, no? Actually, pwede mo punain dapat yung mga uh, ibang chapters. Halimbawa, yung sinasabi mo nga, taga Sampalo ka, so, nagpunta ka ng bulakan, nadaanan mo, at uh, nakita mo na parang illegal na uh, practice mm-hmm. there. So, 
ni report mo, din dapat si uh, other chapters in Bulacan should upon this. So, kasi, di ba, uh, nasaan yung effect nun? Those artifacts na nasa Bulacan. Di ba? So, hindi kailangan na taga Bulacan din. Hmm, no? Correct. Correct. So, correct. Kasi, mo, oh, di ba, hindi mo makikita minsan yung iyong uh, dumi sa, sa sarili mo. Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. Pala, no? So, makikita mo yan minsan sa ibang tao. Di ba? Yung uh, yes. which window natin sa psychology. No? So, pwedeng i-report dapat sa mga chapters and uh, ang, ang panawagan kung atin sa mga chapters. No? We should be active in uh, in creating a committee on uh, illegal practice. Kasi pagka hindi naman ang chapter ang gumalaw dahil, sasabihin na natin, ituturo natin palagi yung uh, national, no? na hindi ko magkakaroon yung national. Pag nagtanong doon, anong ginagawa ng chapters if that is uh, within the area of jurisdiction? No? Remember, ako ang unit ko kasi, why chapters was created is uh, to be an alter ego of the uh, UAP national to uh, look on the uh, illegal practices no? to, to look optimal practices. Hindi mm-hmm. tayo nag-create the organization just for purposes of socialization. No? Did the purpose of the organization? Yes! Yes! Hindi po tayo nag-meeting para lang makikain. <laughs> to protect the interest of the profession. Kaya nandyan yan. No, so, siguro, uh, titignan din ng mga chapters, no? Kung mayroon ba tayong committee on legal practice, no? Do we uh, see or do we ask any uh, yung mga practices na yan that uh, it affects to the practice of our profession within our uh, cities and uh, municipalities, no? Huwag lang tayong bowling lang ng bowling, no? Kasi may mga, dapat may mga pagkakataon din na nakatutok din tayo doon sa mga illegal practices to protect the interest of the profession. Okay, sir. So, yun. Um, if I'm money from Manila, pwede ko i-report sa Bulacan. Why mm-hmm. if yung nagmamalpractice is from outside of Philippines pa? Last uh, man siya sa ibang bansa, pero kung nakakakontrata siya ng mga, mga drawings dito and all, um, wala ako sa jurisdiction, Asa may nasa Pilipinas ako, asa may hinila ako, pwede ko pa siya pailan ng kaso. Ako mismo, ipapailan ko pa ng kaso kahit wala ako dun sa area niya. Pwede ba yun? Uh, he is a foreigner? Hindi, Pilipino rin sir. Pero nasa ibang bansa siya. Nasa ibang bansa lang siya. Okay. Uh, una, uh, if you are outside the Philippines, uh, ito ano, if you are outside the Philippines, ano na, hindi ka arkitekto. Mm-hmm. Because our uh, license, our authority to practice in our certificate of registration is only uh, limited within uh, our areas of jurisdiction. Pag lumabas ka ng ibang bansa, tinatawag ka lang na arkitekto, na-employ ka doon as uh, arkitekto, pero sa totoo lang, yung uh, iyong authority to practice has to pull forth an effect. So, hindi ka arkitekto sa ibang bansa mm-hmm. sa ibang bansa ng uh, Pilipinas. No? So, yun. Ngayon, kung siya ay arkitekto, uh, well, pwede naman siya magpudrapa ba't di ka nakasign ng seal. No? So kung preparation ng document yan, kung hindi talaga sir architecto, kung hindi okay, talaga sir lisensado, then uh, that is still considered as illegal practice. Hindi pa rin pwede. So ako, na nandito ako sa Pilipinas, malayo ako sa kanya, iba naman yung ginagawa ng project, I can file a case against him. Yes, of course. As long na yung ginagawa niya is nasa Pilipinas. Okay. So, ako, uh, since marami nagsusumbong sa akin, marami ako nakikita mga violation, pwede ako mismo mag-file, pwede ko rin idaan through my UAP chapter. Yes, of course. Uh, in fact, uh, di ba, ang pipirma pa rin yan kung sino yung architect na nasa Pilipinas. Uh, so, the yes. one who can send na architect yan is damay dyan because it's not uh, aiding or I bet think that person in the practice of the illegal, uh, the illegal practice. So, malinaw yun, sir. Pwede akong magkaso sa kahit na sino. Makita ko nagmamal practice. Okay. Yes. Baka may masampula na. <laughs> okay, sir. We have more questions. Kanina ang pinag-uusapan lang natin, puro architects. And you cannot sign, you cannot sign and sell any drawings na hindi gawang gumawa. Pwede yun kung as in empleyado mo siya, hindi siya license, pero empleyado mo siya, sa yung gumawa, na na-mentor mo siya, nagtaktak niya, kita mo mismo kung hindi ka pa na niya ginawa yung everything, then you can sign for that. Pero hindi pwedeng um, pasign na lang 
then hindi naman talaga ikaw yung gumawa. So that's one. Number two, if you are a contractor, meron kang um, empleyadong arkitekto, your employee, kahit license pa siya, cannot sign for that dahil empleyado mo siya. You still have to hire an architect consultant outside of your contractor, uh, contractor firm. Right, sir? Yes, so, pero well, okay. I mean, uh, gumagawa niyan sa market, ano? <laughs> Eh, linawin natin para nakikita nila, di ba, na violation pa rin yun. So, so kung naman malinaw yun, sana sa mga nanonood po na clients, um, ask your contractors kung meron, kasi isa yun sa catch nila eh, um, pre-design. Kasi nga, meron sila mga piyadong arkitekto. So, in a way, that, that kills the profession eh. So, parang si, si arkitektong taga-drawing lang, babayaran lang nila ng magkano, and then, okay na. Diba? Tapos palalabas nila sa client, it's free. Of course, it's not free. Binayaran pa rin nila yon ng maliit na amount. So, kaya lang, tawawa si architect kasi may liability siya, diba? So, dalawa na yun, naninaw, hindi pwede. Third, isa pang napakalinaw, if you're not an architect, kung hindi ka lisensyadong architect, kung hindi ka pwede yung magdender ng services as, as an architect, or even if hindi mo pa ginagamit yung term na architect, nag-design ka, Kasi yung nangilusot nila, di ba? Masama ba mag-design? Masama ba mag-drawing? Di ba? Bawal pa rin. Okay. Okay, sir. Meron pa dito isang question. Hindi naman daw kasi arkitekto ang nagsasign. Hmm. Civil engineer. Basahin natin kung sino nag-ano ha. Uh, para hindi ako makawot, baka sabihin ako lang laging galit sa engineer. <laughs> sabi niya, sabi ni Ian Mendoza, kaso po, kasi ang nag-sign and seal, mga CP. As long as allowed sila ng building official to sign, I think hindi ito agad mabigigil. What can you say about that? Well, sa ngayon kasi, uh, dahil naka-pending sa Supreme Court yung uh, case natin dyan, so wala tayong magagawa dyan hanggat uh, tinatanggap niya ng Office of the uh, Building Official. So, ngayon, kung sa tingin ng isang agrabyado, for example, ay... Uh, kung gusto niyang uh, ma, ma ano ma test case no eh pumbut ba niya yung building official that will accept that uh, sign and seal uh-huh. ng uh, drawings pero test case yan no either matatalo ka or uh, mananalo ka no kasi ano na may pending uh, case kasi sa Supreme Court without signing and sealing no kaya nga iba hindi na implement niya ng ating section na uh, 302 ng revised uh, IRR because of that uh, practice ng uh, mga kaibigan natin uh, civil engineer na sinasabi ng CBR allowed to sign and seal the uh, architectural uh, drawings na ito sinasabi ng kanilang RA544. Pero broad, no? Broad yung kanilang RA544. They are only referring uh, to the word buildings kaya sinasabi daw nila uh, they are allowed to sign and seal the, that uh, uh, document. No? So, hanggat hindi yan mariresolve ng uh, Supreme Court, doon tayo mahihirapan. No? Unless the building official or the acting uh, building official, for example, is an architect and uh, hindi niya tatanggapin yung mga, mga sinasign and seal ng uh, mga civil engineer. Pero sir, hindi ba nakalagay sa RA 9266 na whatever yung mga uh, iba pang batas na, na that encompass that area, is ang sa, sa ang magiging basis na is the RA 9266 kasi yun yung mas bago. Mm-hmm. Alin po ba yung mas bago? Yung yung batas na pinanghahawakan nila pwede silang mag-sign and seal o yung batas natin? Kasi yun ang sinasabi nila, meron silang batas na pwede, meron tayong sino, meron tayong batas na nagsasabi hindi pwede. Alin po ba yung mas bago at alin yung dapat sundin? Okay. Ah, uh, yung uh, statement kasi na yan, no? yung uh, repealing clause ng uh, ating uh, RA 9266 na nakalagay doon na uh, RA 545 and other uh, other uh, executive orders, rules and regulations and other laws uh, inconsistent with the provisions of this uh, act is hereby uh, repeal or modified accordingly. Okay? That is an implied uh, repeal. No? But you know, in uh, in uh, one law na kailangan mong repeal Ang sinasabi naman ng uh, civil code natin is that implied repeal is not paid for. Okay? So, ang sinasabi ng civil code is that kung gusto mong i-repeal talaga yung isang batas, ini-mention mo siya na nire-repeal mo. No? So, ang
ang nakalagay kasi sa repealing clause natin is only and other laws who are inconsistent. Well, siyempre, ang mga defense naman nila na hindi daw inconsistent because that is practice of engineering. No? And uh, you are in the practice of uh, architecture. Pag uh, tininan ninyo, ninyo yung ating uh, RNA 266, meron din dyan provision na nakalagay na this law shall not affect other professional. O, di ba? O, sabihin nila sa atin na practice of uh, engineering to. No? Kasi, although alam natin that that is uh, a practice of architecture, but uh, still, that is uh, may dispute nga no? sa Supreme Court dahil uh, ang, ang interpretation nila is they are allowed to prefer uh, financial uh, building plans. No? In fact, ang, ang uh, term nila dyan is uh, building plan. Uh, building plan. Eh, kung ako naman ang titingin, pagka-building plan, ibig sabihin, pati uh, electrical, structural, uh, planning and sanitary, pwede sa kanila lahat, and building plan. No? Diba? Ganun lang naman yun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And so, so and everything. Oo. Oh, but of course, considering your uh, profession, oh, in fact, uh, civil engineers are not really allowed to financial structural. Eh. No? Kasi yung role ngayon dapat po structural engineers. So, pag tinignan natin in, uh, in i- legal perception, that is the role of the structural engineer. Kasi mayroong specialty board ang uh, structural uh, engineering no? rather than uh, Uh, civil engineers. Ang naging problema natin ngayon is that yung uh, ating uh, case na yan, no, na intervenor ang uh, UAP in behalf of the uh, membership, nakapending pa sa Supreme Court hanggang ngayon. No? Sabi ko nga, hanggat hindi maglabas ng decision ng uh, Supreme Court regarding that issue, even yung uh, ating uh, standard of peace, hindi natin may implement ng uh, tama ang sinasabi natin yung percentage under uh, professional practice. Hindi natin may implement yan kasi may kalaban eh. No? Kalaban mo yung other professional. Kalaban mo yung mga illegal practices. Pero pagka nag-design ng court and uh, it should be in our uh, favor, then isa na lang ang kalaban mo yung mga illegal practice, practitioners. And, and since na hindi na pwede, for example, no, kung mag-design yung court in our favor at hindi na pwede mag-sign and sell ng mga civil engineers sa mga gawa ng mga illegal uh, practitioners, mas madali na ngayon di uh, penalize and babantayan yung mga kapwa nating arkitekto na magsasign and seal ng mga gawa ng mga illegal practitioners. No? At yeah. madali na i-impose yung mga standard of peace na yan. Sa ngayon, hindi yan na-impose because maraming kalaban. No? Other professionals and other uh, yung mga illegal practitioners. So, sir, isa sa pwedeng maging bala natin to 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 not have these problems is magkaroon ng uh, building official as a designated architect. Architect talaga yung ha, uh, maging building official na uh, huling pikirma sa ating mga, yun ba yung solusyon doon? Well, uh, ang uh, sinasabi ng ating uh, building code no, on the revised IRR, uh, ang, qualified, ang qualified to sit as building officials is uh, an architect and uh, an engineer. So, yun ang sinasabi. Mm-hmm. Ang, ang point lang natin is that uh, pagka-arkitekto ang umupo as building official no? at uh, hindi niya in-impose yung RA 9262. Pwede kalaban yung mga arkitekto, pwede siyang itawag sa Committee on Ethics. Pwede ba? Okay. So, uh, so yun, may control. control. Otherwise, pagka hindi arkitekto yan, ombudsman tayo. Di ba? So yun ang mm-hmm. So, kaya arkitekto mo po, kapag hindi ethics sa uh, pumiti mo siya, mapipilitan siya ngayon mag-impose. No? Yung yeah. mga engineers na mag-impose. Kasi pwede siyang i-reclamo. One case. So, yun yun ang mangyayari. Yun. Ayan. So, thank you very much. Um, ang hadami na natin napag-usapan, pero bitin na bitin pa. We're already going over time. Okay pa ba, sir, for another maybe 10 minutes? Yeah, sige, sure. Ayun, uh, pero before we continue, I'd just like to mention again, all those who are watching, um, you can win a Buildy TV t-shirt or a Buildy t-shirt. Uh, all you have to do is share this live video, tag two of your friends, and um, use hashtag Buildy TV, Buildy na may TV yun, and then the digital architect, and also, lagtag na natin yung hashtag maestro. So, um, So yun, for those who are watching, marami po tayong mga uh, kasama dito, mga, uh, both of them are architects uh, who are watching. Thank you for always watching Building TV. Um, merong comment si Architect Freddy Bautista, there is no such thing as a free design. The cost is normally given as part of the construction cost and works to the interior results that you have to live with for the rest of the user's life. The clients are shortchanged and actually pay, pay more than expected. So, 
design no kasi kaya nga sinasabi ni Arvin ready ini insert naman yan no sa ibang uh, item sa mm, uh, uh, gumawa ng uh, cost uh, estimate sa isang GNT so that is only a marketing strategy para sabihin ng GNT na sige walang bias pwede yung design sa magpo-cost na so, pag, so sa totoo lang naka-built in naman ang uh, cost niyan no either sa preliminaries or oh, yeah. design oh, yeah. items so Uh, work. Lalo na sa uh, hindi ka naka-build of materials. No? Kasi pagka contractor yung uh, kukunin ng owner, ang isa sa sa owner is build of quantities. So pagka build of quantities, hindi yan uh, material cost na makikita mo yung uh, direct cost ng uh, material na magagamit sa project. So pagka naka-POQ kasi, naka-factor in yun. No? May, uh, may 50% profit, 50% uh, overhead. And so, yun ang ilagay yun sa kanyang uh, overhead sa preliminaries kung maitago niya yung design doon. So, wala talaga ng pre-design. Hindi uh, maniwala dyan sa pre-design. So, yun, no? Ilang beses na po namin pinaulit-ulit sa maraming episode ng Daily TV, there's no such thing as pre-design. In fact, if a contractor offers you pre-design, then sambahan po kayo. Kasi pag sinabi nilang it's free, Ibig sabihin, nililoko na kayo agad. Kasi automatic yun, imposible yung free eh. Kahit na sabihin mong hindi sila magbayad ng service ng architect, magbayad pa rin sila ng kuryente, nagbayad pa rin sila ng printing, nagbayad pa rin sila ng kung ano pang mga iba. So, the, the main reason, uh, the, the first time na sabihin nilang it's free, nandaloko na po sila. So, don't believe that there's such thing as free design. Uh, may cost yan. And if they, um, if they hire, A design consultant, an architect, a licensed architect to do that, if they cannot offer it as low as that, of course, definitely not. So, isa po yun sa isa-check nyo sa mga clients natin. If there's a contractor who offers free design, um, alamin nyo na kung paano nangyari yun. And maybe insist, better if you insist, na um, I would like to at least get to know who's the architect who will be handling my project. So, para personally silang mag-uusap sa pag-design na yun at hindi mag-speak copy-paste, di ba? Um, secondly, kayo na rin po mismo yung mag-uwis, being the clients, kasi kayo yung magamit na. Di ba? Kayo yung titira dyan. It's your security and your safety that's on the okay. So, maging mas uh, mas stricto po tayo sa pagpili na magpo-construct. Um, tama si Architect Fernandez kanina, no? hindi totoo yung free design and hindi kayo nakakatikin. In fact, kapag ka merong contractor na nag-offer ng free design, mas kabahan ka na posible mas lumaki yung construction cost mo kasi that's their way on going in, uh, on getting the yung, yung cost na yun, di ba? So, yun po, isa sa ating advice sa ating mga clients. Um, Actually, uh, meron din na... Uh, ayan, so, marami sir. Yes, go ahead. Uh, meron din iba, no, na... Uh, sasabihin nila sobrang baba ng fee, no, di ba? And uh, usually, ang pinoprovide nila is that uh, comprehensive uh, architectural uh, drawings, not only for purposes of uh, building permits, no, yun naman ang ginagawa ng iba. And then later on, mas talong lumulobo yung uh, cost ng uh, project ng owner dahil kulang yung detail, no, hindi na estimate ng tayo. Dahil uh, ang mga details, no, is only yung mga basic details na Uh, makumplete lang yung uh, number of keys no, and makakuhanan uh, ng building permit. But uh, the architectural element is not really uh, included in the design and later on, nagkakaroon ng additional uh, cost, no, nagiging variation orders and uh, change orders. Ang problema lang dyan, siyempre yung owner hindi niya matapon yung uh, additional cost ng variation orders and change orders doon sa uh, mga nag-design yung saan na sobrang uh, baba yung fee. Eh sinasabi ko nga, ang client ko kapag hindi manghihinayang sa tamang singil ng arkitekto, kasi kung uh, si singil ng arkitekto ng tama sa kanya, bibigyan siya ng arkitekto ng tamang uh, servisyo no, na kumpleto rin yung uh, detalye. Kasi kung uh, uh, babarating mo rin yung arkitekto mo, baka bibigyan ka lang din ng arkitekto uh, ng uh, servisyo na katulad ng din sa fee na hinihigay mo later on, ikaw pa ang uh, mamukulteba doon sa uh, project. No? Kasi minsan siyempre kailangan din na uh, or kailangan din magkaroon ng uh, put on the table no? so kahit uh, mababa yung so, isi-serve ng uh, isang uh, professional. Pero of course, equivalent din doon sa fee na uh, hiningi 
na uh, actually umikot na rin itong issue na to eh kasi hindi siya architect nag-offer siya ng design and then us architects nakita yung mali sa design niya so may mga nag-comment na may mali ka dito bakit ganyan yung design mo hindi pwede yan um, uh, hindi makakalabas yung tao kasi ang baba ng ceiling mo or ganon and then his answer was wala akong pakialam kasi hindi naman ako yung titira hmm. hindi naman so the drawing lang sa So, yun po yung isa sa rason why you should hire an architect and pay kung tama. Kasi um, mas mahirap yung dinirain lang niya at pinapipis lang na kung saan yung drawing mo. Pero pag ipokontract mo na, hindi mo na sa mabuo kasi kukulit ko lang sa detalye. And worse, hindi mo na makontact yung nag-design yung bahay mo. So, isa yun na napaka-importante, di ba? Ito pa sir, we have another question from Francis Lucan. Um, tanong ko lang po, bakit po ang mga CV, pwede sila makapirma sa scope of work ng architect? Well, it's the same answer dahil nakapending yung uh, case natin sa Supreme Court. No? And uh, previously kasi, uh, they were allowed also no, sa bago mag-9260, both uh, architects and uh, CEs. No? Uh, napayagan na uh, gumawa ng uh, architectural and structural. But, you know, generally, tayo lang talaga sa RE545 ang malinaw yung architectural and structural design. No? Pag tinignan mo talaga sa RE5, so wala talaga silang architectural. Ang pinahahawakan lang talaga nila yan is the word building. Okay. So, yun po, no? Thank you very much. Uh, architect uh, Alfred Fernandez, uh, our maestro, Thank you for clearing a lot of things for us. Although napakahaba pa po ng ating dapat pag-usapan. Uh, sabi nga, sabi nga ni Will, nag-iinit pa lang ang ating viewers. Maybe we should, ha, we should get a part two. So for those who are watching us, kung gusto nyo magkaroon ng part two, mag-comment kayo part two dito sa live na to para ma-invite ulit natin si Maestro para sa isang uh, oras ulit ng kwentuhan about this dahil napakarami pa po natin mapag-usapan. Again, we thank you Architect Alfred Fernandez and um, I'll give you the floor now to promote whatever you want to promote your your book. Yun po, kung hindi nyo man kami pugitin man itong usapan na ito, marami pa kayong matututunan sa book ni Architect Fernandez. Yeah, this is a sa mga viewers natin, ano, uh, sa mga hindi pa nakapag-purchase ng uh, RA9266 uh, uh, Q&A with notes and cases, dito may mga cases ng uh, Supreme Court ano, na nakalagay and uh, this is a Q&A uh, version and uh, na napaka-informative naman yung uh, book. No? So you can uh, buy it at uh, 825 at uh, Central Bookstore. Uh, nationwide, no? pero limited siguro yung copy pagdating sa provinces. So, you can uh, check uh, Central Bookstore, uh, SM Mega Mall, B Floor, uh, yung head office nila sa Quezon Avenue, or you can uh, message me sa may uh, messenger, no? kasi pag sa akin na uh, meron kasamang uh, a short message and uh, autograph, uh, perma ko. No? So, yun. And then, uh, sa mga hindi pa nakapag-subscribe sa aking uh, YouTube channel, no, a Coffee Talk with uh, Maestro, marami ako mga lectures doon, and uh, including uh, construction contract management, yung mga variation, change orders will be coming soon for uh, discussion. Thank you, and uh, maraming salamat sa pagtangkilo. Ayun, thank you again, Architect Fernandez. So, if you want to, okay, to purchase the book, yung RA9266, Um, yung mga cases na napag-aralan ni Architect Fernandez. Kung meron kayong gusto complain at gusto nyo i-double check doon kung pa paano nyo sa ibang complain, makikita nyo doon kung ano yung mga sections and um, whatever yung mga um, napag-aralan nila about the RA9266 specific to our province. Um, you can refer to that. Message lang po kayo kay Architect Fernandez. You can see him sa kanyang Facebook uh, account or uh, subscribe sa kanyang YouTube channel. Um, we will post his links um, after this uh, live para madali nyo po siyang makontak. And for Dr. Ayan, ang dami nang nagpa-comment ng part 2. Uh, comment lang po kayo. If you reach 100 comments na nagsabi ng part 2, i-guess natin ulit si Arkelex Fernandez. Okay ba yun, sir? 100 comments. Oy, at saka ano, better if you, if you comment yung mga screenshot ng subscribe na kayo sa YouTube channel ni Maestro. And siyempre, isisingit ko na rin, no? Um, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, easy to, para lang makikuha nyo agad yung link, bit.ly backslash TDA YouTube or capital letter. So, mag-subscribe din po kayo doon. Again, thank you very much, Architect Fernandez.
Hernandez. Thank you very much for all those who are watching us. And any last words, architect? Well, uh, as much as possible, let's uh, practice our profession uh, ethically. No? Kasi uh, sa atin dapat uh, magsisimula. No? Hindi tayo magantay sa iba na ipupuna pa sa atin yan. Tayo na rin magsimula sa sarili natin para wala rin silang masabi pagka tayo ay pumuna sa kanila. Correct. So tayo-tayo na po ang magpulis sa isa't isa. No? So kapag ka may nakikita kayong hindi tamang ginagawa ng fellow architects like si Peter Masilan, ang hindi naman sila yung gumawa or, or maybe um, unethical conduct, you can also um, you can also police that. Kahit tayo-tayo kailangan tayo na yung lumilis sa atin, di ba? Para maging good um, good reputation dyan para sa mga kanyang. So again, thank you very much Architect Fernandez. Thank you very much for all those who uh, who join in our Will You TV today. Next week, our um, 